Hey y'all, Chi Chi here. Welcome back to my channel. I am here with your end of May 2022 Taurus reading, okay? Uh, before we get started, let's go for five deep breaths. I'm going to play the singing bowl while we just recalibrate our energy, okay? Um, I want you to, again, inhale through the nose, eyes open or close, whatever. Let's just slow it down, yeah? Breathe in. <laughs> beverage if you have one and like i said i'm here for your end of may 2022 reading for taurus this will apply for your sun moon um, and or rising sign okay and i'm gonna go with the morgan greer deck yeah i try to remember to put a link to the tarot deck in uh, the description but we're gonna work with the morgan greer deck for taurus and then we'll clarify with the traditional um the traditional deck, okay? And let me stop the music. <sighs> okay. I have YouTube music playing in the background, so I don't I hate the awkward silence when it stops and says, Are you still there? Are you still listening? Continue with music? Yes, did it actually stop? No. Okay, <clears throat> so at the time of this recording, we are officially in Gemini season. Happy birthday to all the Geminis, okay? And happy birthday to the end of um, May Tauruses, okay? And special shout out to the Taurus Gemini Cuspers out there, okay? Um, this is still your time, all right? Those couple of days that we transition from Gemini season to Taurus, it is all about the Cuspers, okay? So we're moving from, the cards are already clean and stuff, and we're still a last minute cleansing. Um, so we just moved from earthy Taurus season, you know, getting grounded, you know, creating more stability and foundation and everything. We just had the Scorpio full moon last Monday, as well as a lunar eclipse while we're in earthy, stubborn, hardworking Taurus energy, okay? And also Mercury retrograde is happening right now, okay? So it's a lot of energy um, in play right now. I keep seeing this tower card, sheesh. All right, so like I said, um, this reading, I'm going to do just a basic three-card past, present, future spread, and with a clear overall, you know, over, over, <laughs> Mercury retrograde, with an overview card, and then we'll, like I said, clarify each row, okay? In the back, I have my, my fur baby, Conan, okay, my teacup chihuahua. He may make an appearance. He's been chilling so far with the other readings I've recorded so far. Uh, so, yeah, you'll expect to see him in some of the readings, all right? So, again, three pop-out cards for Taurus Energy, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Three pop-out cards for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for end of May. Okay, too many cards popped out, or I could just use all three of these. Okay, I'm going to use all three of these. Uh, bottom of the deck, or not bottom of the deck, but overall card, Justice, okay. Mm. Bottom of the deck is the star, though. And I did bottom of the deck last time. Mm. Right, when the things went off. Mm. Cause So now I don't want to use all the cards because I might see that Justice. Okay, so what popped out, what popped out, let's see if it comes back, okay. Queen of Rods, Six of Swords. Lovers, okay, those are the cards that popped out. I'm not gonna keep them because they all just fell out. Weird, I don't know. I just feel like, yeah, because I did buy the music deck for the overall card last time, so I just want to keep, you know, but we'll see if they come out, okay? Ooh. Okay, first card is the Hermit. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. 
Taurus Sun. Okay. Taurus Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. The Taurus. The Taurus card. Okay. Bottom of the deck. Ooh, three of swords. Oh. Okay. This is this reading is actually pretty similar to the three cards that just popped out. Not that they're the same, but like in general, I could see like how they would like would line up. Okay, so the first card that popped out is the Hermit card, which is the sign of Virgo. It's giving very much Virgo energy. We see with the Hermit is this old man. He has a staff in his hand, in one hand, his light. Um, in one in another hand and it represents wisdom, you know going into solitude in order to gain more wisdom so perhaps um, In Taurus season you were in a bit of a not maybe you were in a bit of a rut You know, maybe you chose to be alone spend some time alone make some time for some introspective um, introspection perhaps you made some time to do some shadow work where you just focusing on your light within or trying to find the lightness in life again you know but we're going to clarify that in a little bit and it could just be a virgo that you were dealing with or perhaps you're a virgo um in the center we have the king of swords which represents air energy it's going to be aquarius libra and Gemini, which is the season that we're in right now. So this could literally represent an air sign man. It could also be you assuming the king of swords energy of just being a master strategist, having a plan, um, crossing your T's, dotting your I's, paying the bills, um, having you know mental fortitude, mental strength, and being clear about being clear and decisive and just really having great communication, okay? Um and you know just being like a man of your word is what comes to mind right now. Being a man of your word. And the future card we have is the Hierophant. And the Hierophant, um, it can represent marriage. It is the Taurus card. It is the number five card. So we're in the fifth month right now. We're in May, which kicks off Taurus season, you know. And um, so this could literally be you as a Taurus. This could be um, someone that you are, um, this could also be like an, an educator, an, a healer, someone that is like a, literally the priest. This is the priest card, right? So this could be someone that um, is a, an efficient, someone of high uh, ranking in the church, someone of high ranking status, okay? And you see here that this person, this priest is giving their blessing, right? They're giving the, the hand blessing symbol and the keys are here. So perhaps this is someone that, that holds the key to some form of power, okay? This is a card of power and this is a, card, this is a life changing card as well. This is a card that holds the power that can change someone's life, all right? And with the bottom of the deck, overall message is the three of swords okay this card um i talked about this card a lot when i was doing the aries reading for some reason even though this card didn't pop out i talked about this a lot um but with the three of swords we see that there is a bleed a heart right of course it's a bleeding heart but we see the three swords penetrating the heart right and we see the blood dripping from the sword and with the three of swords swords energy represents air energy air um Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, the season we're in now. So this could be um, a third party situation where you've got your heart broken, okay? Perhaps, um, you know, yeah, like per this could literally be like being cheated on, okay? It could also be um, just literally having your heart broken, you know, whether that's receiving some bad news, okay? Getting an unexpected phone call that just like crushes your soul, um, you know, some type of hurtful communication, or this can literally be an illness of the heart, okay? Heart illness. So check on that as well. Um, because, yeah, we're going to clarify all the cards anyway, but this could also literally be an illness of the heart, a condition of the heart. All right. And considering Taurus is ruled by Venus, which is the feminine energy, it does have a big theme of love and heart energy. Um, but let's clarify those cards with the traditional tarot deck here. All right. Right away, the traditional right away deck. And let's clarify the hermit card first. So remember, I said this is uh, Virgo energy. 
Um, but okay, so the hermit clarify two clarifiers for the hermit, please. Two clarifiers for the hermit. Two clarifiers for the hermit, please. Mm, and you see that card popped out last time. So the hermit card is being uh, being clarified by the eight of swords, more air energy, and the justice card, more air energy. Okay. So the Eight of Swords card, we see this woman, this person, whatever, this person is bound up. There are eight swords around the person, but the swords doesn't create a complete circle, right? It's, there's an opening within the circle of swords. Um, there is a blindfold on this person. Their feet are, one foot is on land, one foot is on water. So there's some indecision in the feet. We see there's some indecision in the roots and the foundation of this person. And like I said, even though they are bound, um, they could also just like shimmy themselves out of the ropes, right? They could, they could, they're not trapped, you know, even though it looks like they're trapped, they're actually not. And they actually have more power than they realize, but it's this, this choice, this card kind of represents choosing to stand still, choosing to turn a blind eye, choosing to act like you don't see something, choosing to not believe that you're strong enough, choosing to believe believing um ideas that will keep you bonded that will keep you in bondage okay and with this justice card this represents libra and libra is ruled by venus like taurus and the justice card is literally that okay it is the number 11 card one one all right so one for you one for me justice establishing balance harmony um establishing um determining what what's value here you know what's at stake here you know how much do, is this worth to you okay if it worth that much to you you need to make it worthwhile for me just trying to find that juggling act if you will right so maybe uh perhaps with this what it says to me with clarifying the hermit card in the past energy it's like taking the need to take a step back to make an assessment of like okay what's going on here what am I choosing to believe or what have I chosen to believe in the past did I choose to believe things that gave me justice or did they did I choose to believe things that made me want to run and hide that made me want to you know be by myself and withdraw from the world okay um yeah, so that's what I'm getting from the past energy. Let's clarify the King of Swords. And also with that first card, the bottom of the deck, Five of Swords. More air energy, yeah? So with this Five of Swords, it's like that. We see the person here. They want, it's like they're looking at them snarky, like, ha, ha, ha. Like they're the victor and the, the people are in the back are the losers, okay? Um, so it's, again, like that static type of, like, you know, just, huh. But anyway, clarifying King of Swords, center card, clarify the King of Swords, King Knight of Cups, and the King of Wands. Nice. Two of Swords, uh, Two of Wands at the bottom of the deck. So clarifying the King of Swords is the Knight of Cups, Love Offer Proposal, and the King of Wands. Okay, so this can literally be um with you having spent this time in solitude and in reflection and getting your thoughts together, now you're arriving in this Gemini season at this current time, um, more structured, more clear on, you know, using that wisdom and doing something with it. Like not just taking the wisdom, learning the lessons and not moving forward. King of Swords is the most exalted of the swords energy. It's the highest of the air energy. Okay, so clear communicator, great communicator, great with ideas, great businessman, all that stuff. Okay, crossing the T's, dotting the I's, slicing whoever head, they could be sliced off, like just deading situations that don't belong. Like a man is just a, or a masculine energy, exalted, that is just fully expressed and just really sharp, sharp communicator. Okay. And again, with it, this card being clarified by the Knight of Cups and the King of Wands, I feel like it could be an offer coming in from a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. It could be a masculine fire sign coming in with an offer, a proposal of some sort. Okay, it could be an offer of love, love meaning, because um, love can come in the form.
form of a compliment. It can come in the form of time spent together doing an act of service for you. Like, hey, I thought about you. I did this. Or, hey, I, I, I spoke your name at the meeting. You know, they should be reaching out to you for a phone call, you know. Um, so some type of offer that's going to help you to move in action, right? Because a king is clarifying a king. So it's very much reinforcing the king energy, reinforcing the masculine energy of having ideas and doing something with it, having ideas and doing something with it, learning the lesson and taking action, um, dreaming up the business idea and putting some action behind it. Okay. So really allowing yourself to receive the offers, receive the proposals, receiving the compliments of, oh my God, you're, you're amazing. Receiving the opportunities that come to you that allow you to feel like a king, that allow you to feel sexy and desirable because the king of wands energy is big dick energy as well it could be someone that's like i want you or maybe you're assuming this energy this big big energy this masculine grand energy of like if i want it i'm gonna go get it you know because maybe in the past you were taken for granted you were hurt um you were not appreciated and now you're just moving forward with the energy of like i have to value myself i have to put myself first and keep myself in the energy and the space of king and royalty and being respected right so I love that center card, and that's the present energy. And with that, the bottom of the deck is the two of wands. It's like this can go one of two ways. You know, we can succeed this way or we, we, we can succeed that way. But either way, the blessings are coming in, right? And it just really comes down to making a, a decision. A king is decisive, okay? This person that was over here, eight of swords, this person is not decisive. This person is not taking action, okay? And that was in the past energy. But in the current energy, is the two kings energy, okay? Okay? And it could also be, you know, for some people, it can literally be two kings battling for the offer of love. Okay, it could be two kings battling over this person that's offering their heart. Two kings, you know, competing against this person or against this or for this proposal. Two, you know, kings co pro um, competing for um, a creative pursuit, a creative spot. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's great. And then let's clarify the Hierophant. Two cards to 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 clarify the Hierophant. It didn't pop out though. And I usually like a pop out card. Two cards clarified for the higher. There we go. Boom. Ooh. Yay. Okay, so the bottom of the deck is Ten of Cups. What's clarifying the Hierophant is the Emperor and the Star card. And I honestly want to do one more. Just because Queen of Pentacles, because I feel like it's a lot of court cards, but it's fine. You know, I'm just keep what was here. I'm going to trust. I know I could break it down. All right. So the Hierophant is being clarified, the Emperor and the Star card, two major arcanas. So I see um, this is giving me big changes in the future. OK, and the Hierophant card, it is a very like serious card because it can deal with religion. It can deal with your religious beliefs, structures that bind you, structures. Um, it could be the law. It could be the government. OK, just really official type of energy with the Hierophant. OK, so in the future column. The Emperor, which is the number four card, and the Emperor is exactly what that is, that King Emperor energy, okay? So I love that in the present and the future spaces, you still have that King Emperor energy resonating heavily, okay? Um, it's also being clarified by the Star card, which is the number 17 card, okay? So the Star card is the number 17 card, and this is Aquarius energy. The Emperor card is Aries energy, and it, I also consider it Taurus as well because it is the number four Taurus, in, Taurus season does start in April. So this gives me Aries because it is Mars. You know, traditionally it is Mars, Aries energy, but I like to say Taurus as well. Anyway, the Star card is Aquarius energy, and this is healing energy. If we see here, there's a beautiful uh, big gold star in the sky. There's more stars in the sky as well and this person they're in the nudie and they are kneeling at the at the water spring 
and they're um what are they they're pouring water into the water and they're also pouring water into the grass into the ground that flows into the water stream okay and aquarius it is considered the water bearer that's what the symbol is and the water bearer um even though it is the water bear Aquarius is an air sign and you see aqua in the name Aquarius so it's very confusing at times but Aquarius is an air sign okay even though it is the water bear and with the star card it is speaking to that message of being the star you know allowing your star to shine allow yourself to be exalted and allow yourself to be watered because as you allow your star to shine as you be your highest and biggest self it gives you more creativity to share it gives you more healing energy to share with other people that want to exalt you that want to pour into you and light you up or that naturally light you up without you even having to ask you know so it's just allowing you to be the emperor and it's clarifying this hierophant so it's just like really allow yourself to be um you know maybe you're you're feeling like you have a higher calling where you need to take a high rank in the church you need to take a high rank in government or a higher position in your career field and you're just feeling that in Energy that it's time to be exalted because if not me who you know and understanding that as you allow yourself to dream that big dream that wish upon a star as you allow yourself to feel that energy in this Gemini season um, because with Gemini season it is a very like I'm living I'm letting my light shine you know I'm letting a all hang out type of energy right because you know pride inner pride season is in June Right. So it is. And, you know, it's springtime. It's getting hotter. It's usually warmer in most parts of the of the world or of the country, whatever, uh, depending on where you are. Right. But um, it's just a, a feel good time. You know, it's usually wedding season in June. You know, so people just feeling, you know, more free. Right. So it's like also like this beautiful balance of allow yourself to be creatively free, but with structure. Be Allow yourself to give and nurture others, but with boundaries so that you can continue to give. Right. Because if you you just give with no boundaries you're gonna be you know probably run a drought you know and it's like who's there to take care of the healer right and as long as you continue to enforce those boundaries and continue to you know create some structure and be that king of swords and be that king of wands to say okay i can go 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 as long as i enforce some boundaries to heal myself to nurture myself to make sure i drink my water to make sure i get my rest to make sure i spend time alone to make sure i meditate and pray and kneel before god you know so i, I think this is a beautiful reading for Taurus. and again with that third column the bottom of the deck was the ten of cups which is again that ultimate happiness we see you know the couple there with their arms outstretched to the rainbow rainbow of ten of cups and you know what's higher than the ten of cups we go from ten to the ace of cups right then it goes to the court cards but the ten is the the highest you know it's the pinnacle it's the totality of happiness here and we see the children dancing in the field you know so this is like that ultimate happiness wishes fulfilled and it comes but but remember even though we have this emperor hierophant two kings energy so much masculine energy here we started in that hermit mode so if you feel like there was he was at a low point that you know you just didn't understand you know just trust and believe that there is king energy waiting on you okay whether it's coming to you or you're going to manifest it and allow yourself to see and feel it for yourself it's on its way all right so let's clarify that oof let's clarify that overall card the three of swords is at the top okay so too many cards popped out yeah too many cards popped out i'll just do you a quick little flash in case they any of them pop back out okay so not keeping them because it's too many but um yeah, i'm not keeping them because it's too many but give me a clarifier for the three of swords what is going on let's clarify the three of swords what is going on what dang king of swords again oh yep bottom of the deck there okay was it a scorpio was it a Scorpio that hurt you? Okay, so what's clarifying the Three of Swords is, you guessed it, the King of Swords again, and the Seven of Swords, sneaky behavior, okay? So, clarifying the Three of Swords, which is your overall card, I feel like 
this was all motivated through some type of heartbreak, you know. Sometimes you have to get your heart punctured. Sometimes you have to get your heart snatched out and just really feel like, ugh, you know, really sad in order to feel like, okay, I'm inspired to move. I'm inspired to do something about this heartbreak. So clarifying the Three of Swords is the King of Swords, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. It could be Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, man, or masculine energy. And, um... Also, the Seven of Swords, more air energy. Like, there's more air energy than anything in this reading for this Taurus, okay? Seven of Swords, we see here, this person is running away, but they're looking behind them, right? They're, it, so, it looks like they're trying to get away. And they're holding five swords, but they left two behind, right? So, you know, is this a fair distribution? You know, remember, air, a swords represents air, communication, ideas, logic. So, um, taking the five away, it's like that pivotal energy. It's like as if this was a life-changing takeaway. Did someone take something from you that just made you want to stop and pivot? You know, so this is giving me like deceptive energy. So, maybe um, an air sign deceived you you know maybe um you feel like you had to run away you had to be cunning you had to outsmart someone did you feel like you had to outsmart someone in order to save yourself did you have to you know take what you can get and run this is also take what you can get and run energy so this could be someone taking from you but you, this could also be you saving yourself and just realizing like fuck it i'll leave those two of swords let me just take my five and go you know like 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 get out while you can type of energy and just taking that higher like this is strategy as well so creating a strategy for your exit this could be exit strategy yeah creating a strategy for your escape plan you know or you know maybe some rant somebody ran off with an air sign you know somebody ran off with your man or you ran off with somebody and you're the air sign man but either way heartbreak deceit betrayal you know, disloyalty even. So I feel like, you know, just using all this energy. And again, bottom of the deck was the death card. Okay. And this is exactly what it sounds like. Um, sometimes you got to realize when something is done and when you need to move away from something so that you can remember what your power is and get your power back and remember who you are. You know, sometimes things have to end so something new and beautiful can begin. Right. So that is your reading, Taurus. Thank you so much for tuning in. Share it with your Taurus friends. Remember my readings you can check out for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus sign, okay? So um, subscribe to my channel, okay? Like, share this video, and I will see you next time. Bye.